In this video, we're going to be taking a look at KLM's Boeing 777 business class on a quick hop from Singapore to Jakarta. We'll look at what sort of service they offer on these shorter legs, how the seats stand up to the rest, and the story behind KLM's little houses. So that it because it hasn't left Sydney yet, right? It, don't try and connect through three different airports in two days on one ticket and expect your bag to go all the way through. After dealing with that bag situation, which I'll talk about in a future video, it was time to get checked in for my KLM flight. I think me and the guy in front of me are the only two people actually checking in for this flight. This kind of makes sense as there's a lot of other daily flights between Singapore and Jakarta and a bunch of the passengers are just continuing on from Amsterdam. KLM uses the Mahaba Lounge in Singapore. This is a very basic and sparse lounge and I would not really recommend coming here early to spend any sort of extra time. It's perfectly fine for a quick drink and a snack, but the real meals didn't look too appealing. And all of the seating is quite aged with a lot of stains and tears. There's a decent selection of soft drinks and a limited selection of alcoholic beverages. Again, not a bad place for a quick drink, but definitely nothing special. All right, so this is one of the showers. Basin. I mean, it's pretty clean. A little bit rough around the edges, but it's clean enough for me. <clears throat> and yeah, a nice toilet too. If you want a quiet toilet, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, uh, check it out. Anyway, I gotta go board my flight. I booked this flight with Qantas using points and I didn't have an easy way to select seats online. When I checked in, I was given a center aisle seat. So just before boarding, I asked if it was possible to be swapped to a window seat. The woman behind the counter was like, yeah, of course, where do you want to sit? I was a bit confused by this, but she clarified front, back, left, right. I went with the front left and about five minutes later found out why there were so many options. I literally had 10 seats around. No one, no one in. I think there's six people out of 36. The flight departed at 6.04 p.m., just over an hour after the scheduled departure time of 5 p.m. This was due to the inbound flight from Amsterdam being delayed. Now, fun fact, despite Singapore and Jakarta having very similar longitudes, they're not actually in the same time zone. There's a whole history about this that I don't really fully understand, but I believe it basically had to do with British rule in the region. Let's start with the seats. The whole KLM business class cabin is really quite nice in my opinion. It's in this 222 configuration, which isn't the best if you're traveling alone. But that being said, this is definitely one of the better 222 setups I've encountered so far. The seats all turn into lie flat beds and are generally just very comfortable. In bed mode, there's a ton of space around the shoulders and the footwell cubby area where your feet go. It is a little tight, but I don't think it would be a major issue for most people. The bed is also quite long, which shouldn't be a surprise. Now, if I compare the seat to the LATAM business class seat I flew on a few videos ago, which was also in a 222 configuration, the two sort of big differences that I noticed between the two seats were that the KLM seats have just way more storage. Up by your shoulder, there's this little like cubby area where there's also a PowerPoint and a water bottle. Just really handy to have a bit of extra storage space, which I just didn't have on the LATAM flight. There's also a bit underneath the TV where you could fit a, a tablet or maybe even a small laptop. Just handy little spots to stick your things that they just didn't have on the LATAM seats. And the other thing is the privacy screen. LATAM did not have this and it was kind of weird. Look, I had a good guy next to me, so look, no weird issues really, but it was still way less private. Obviously, on this KLM flight, I had no one next to me or no one even near me, but it felt a lot more private having this bit of a privacy screen there. Kind of felt like you're in your own little world, so that was definitely a big plus. Now let's talk about the food. For a one hour and 21 minute flight, the fact that they even had a meal service that was more than just like a cookie and nuts was very impressive. They started with drinks and seeing as it was a Dutch sort of day, I had to go with a Heineken. They then brought around these nice little sandwich rolls. There were two choices, a cheese option or a salmon and cucumber option. 
I went with the salmon and cucumber option. It was not the biggest roll in the world, but it was really, really good. Super fresh, just like something you'd get at like a nice sort of cafe. Once I'd finished my roll, the flight attendant realized and came around and offered me a second one. Amazing. More generally, the service on this flight was all around really great. I mean, they only had like six people to look after in business class, so I guess that makes things a bit easier, but they were just generally a super friendly, helpful crew. They're all Dutch too, which, I mean, it should be obvious, it's KLM, but I know some airlines like Finnair use a Singaporean crew for some of their flights out of Singapore, but they were all Dutch here. I've never been to the Netherlands, so I don't know, that was cool for me. <laughs> Another cool Dutch thing was the Delft I think that's how you say it, houses that they brought around after the meal service. I didn't really know much about these before I flew KLM, but the flight attendant sat down in the seat next to me and explained the whole history of them to me. I actually found it really interesting, so let me give you a brief summary of the Delft house. KLM is the world's oldest continuously operating airline, having started operation on October 7th, 1919. A bit after that, in the 1950s, airlines would gift first-class passengers crockery in order to garner customer loyalty. Industry rules changed in 1952, limiting the value of gifts airlines were able to give passengers to just 75 cents. Even in today's money, that's not a whole lot. In order to loophole these rules, KLM came up with the Delft House, a decorative house filled with a Dutch Geneva, a Geneva? basically a gin that they considered the last drink on the house, with most people never opening them and keeping them as memorabilia. When KLM got rid of their first class in 1993, they just started giving them out to business class passengers. The whole collection was a bit random up until 1994, when KLM was celebrating their 75th birthday. They decided to increase the range up to 75 and then release a new house every year on the 7th of October to celebrate their birthday. As of October 7th, 2022, there are currently 103 houses available to collect. The houses are available on intercontinental flights, and for some reason my flight too. They are randomly distributed and some people go crazy trying to complete their collections with rarer houses going for hundreds of dollars on eBay. I have my one house now and I'm definitely not in a rush to complete my collection. Let's go check out the toilet. This is a really top tier lab. It smells really nice in here. It's got a really nice, really nice floor. Beautiful sort of artwork. Of course, it's got a mirror. Fake flowers. Body lotion. Body mist. Do I spray it on my face? Mm. Not sure if I was. Supposed to do that. Anyway. Hair gel. Hair gel. Why is there hair gel in the toilet? I googled the hair gel and apart from a few articles announcing the new toiletry partner for KLM, nobody seems to think this is as weird as I thought it was. Maybe I'm the weird one, not doing my hair in the aeroplane toilet. Anyway. Let's talk about the in-flight entertainment. This is an incredibly good system. It's very similar to what you get on like Emirates, just without the live TV. There's a huge selection of movies, TV shows, and even some half decent games. You could fly on this plane for like 12 hours a day for a week straight and not watch the same thing twice. All around a very impressive system. They even had a great controller. It's very reminiscent of a PS Vita if you ever had one of them back in the day. Having a second screen is actually quite handy as well. If you're watching something, it's quite nice to be able to check the map on the second screen without having to click off on the big screen. You can also play games just on the controller. This is great if you're like fully reclined and you don't want to have to crane your neck to look at the screen. This is just hands down one of the best systems currently going around. They also seem to have Wi-Fi installed on this plane, but it wasn't working on my flight. I'm guessing they just don't bother turning it on for these shorter flights. The pricing in the plans all seemed pretty reasonable though. They had like a free messaging plan where you can just use text-based messaging apps, uh, like WhatsApp, iMessage, all that sort of stuff. And then they had like a one hour plan and then full flight options at different speeds. And it was anywhere from eight euro, you can see them here, all the way up to 30 euro. This is all gonna be satellite internet, so none of it's gonna be super crazy fast, but it's still a nice thing to have. I'm personally looking forward to the future where we all have Starlink on planes. We landed in Jakarta at 6.26pm local time, 41 minutes late. Remember again the completely ridiculous one hour time difference between Jakarta and Singapore. 
That was my experience of KLM on this quick hop from Singapore to Jakarta. It was a really great time and there's something just about the vibe of this airline that makes me definitely want to try them again. The seats are definitely one of the best 222 business class seats around. KLM is rolling out a new business class seat. They've got it installed in their Dreamliners. It's in a 121 configuration reverse herringbone seat. They are retrofitting all of their 777 fleet with this new seat. Once that's done, KLM is just going to be, yeah, just amazing. Oh, look at that. It's my favorite. Done that. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Like and subscribe if you did. I've got more coming, so keep your eyes open for them. Check out flightformula.com, especially if you're into Qantas frequent flyer points. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Wow. I'm so sleep deprived, I've forgotten what uh, room number I was. Um, I think it was 83 something. I'm just walking around trying my key card on things now because I, I got off the elevator, I got no idea what, what my room is.